Hey, welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video, we will go from this image to this one. You can see we will fix the contrast, add some more warmth to this image, as well as a little bit of glow in the distance. And for all of this, I will be using Adobe Photoshop. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file and you can find the link to it in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So first off, of course, I have to do the basic raw adjustments and I'm doing them in the camera raw editor of Photoshop. To start things, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Neutral. There's a chance you might not have this profile in your list down here. So if you don't find it, just hit the browse button and under Adobe Raw, you can find Adobe Neutral. This profile makes the image very flat, so I can just have some more control over the contrast, which is really helpful for some images like this. Now let's go through the basic stuff. As I said, I do want to add some warmth here and the best way to begin this is to simply raise the temperature of the white balance. This brings back golden hour light, which I really like for this image. I could also play around with the tint a little bit since the green tones are quite heavy in this shot, but that looks good. Then let's work on the exposure. First off, I'd like to bring down the highlights just to get some more details, especially in the clouds because they are very bright at the same time, I do want to raise the whites just to get a very bright image, just like that. And I like to also raise the blacks a little bit. All right. So that has reduced the contrast even further. So let's fix that by bringing up the contrast. And I can also increase the dehaze for the same effect, but it kind of has a different look to it. So that's looking really good. Also, I want to raise the texture just for a sharp looking image. Now I'm quite satisfied with the exposure, but I do want to add some vibrance for more saturation. All right, and I guess that's it for the base adjustments. Let's compare to before. You can see we changed the colors quite dramatically and now it looks more like a golden hour image as it's supposed to be. We do have less contrast than before, but don't worry about that. We will fix that along the way. For now, let's do some local adjustments in the masking menu. First off, I do want to make the blue part of the sky darker and this will already help with the contrast. So that's really easily done. I'm just going to use a color range mask and of course click in the blue area of the sky like this. You can see the lake in the foreground will get selected as well, but don't worry, I'm going to subtract with a linear gradient and just take away a bit of the sky right here. Maybe like this. I do want the bottom part of the sky to stay as bright as it is right now. So with this mask, let's bring down the exposure. Okay, that looks good. I can add another linear gradient for the very top part of the sky. And here, let's just bring down the blacks like this maybe. And I'm also going to bring down the saturation very, very slightly to not get overwhelmed by all those blues in the sky. All right, then I do want to work on this mountain range in the back. I am starting this with the sky selection, then just invert this mask. And you can see we have a pretty good selection up here, but of course I don't want to have the foreground. So I'm going to subtract, uh, let's go with the brush first and just brush over this area right here real quick. And then I'm just subtracting another linear gradient for the very near foreground. And here we have a perfect selection for the mountain range in the back. So here, let's bring up the contrast again. And I'm also going to drop the shadows. This will also improve the contrast and just make the mountains in the back look a little bit clearer. And we could work with clarity maybe, but I really don't want to overdo it. So I guess that's good at this point. Okay, then I do want to work on the very near foreground right here. So therefore I'm using a linear gradient again and just drag it up like this. And of course I need to subtract using the brush again. And here it's just important to select the auto mask box right here. Otherwise you will end up reducing the mask a bit too much. 
you can see with the auto mask we are just subtracting this lake from the foreground okay in here and let's first bring up the texture i do want this area to be very sharp so that will help a lot then i'm going to increase the whites a bit for a bit more brightness and i'm also going to introduce some more contrast and at this point the foreground starts to look a bit too yellow so let's bring down the temperature just a little bit to fix that color cast all right perfect and i also want to work on that lake itself so here for let's create the radial gradient just a rough one to cover most of the surface and just bring up the whites to add some more brightness here perfect finally let's create another radial gradient to add some glow coming in from the left side i'm going to rotate it a bit to fit the sunlight direction of course just place it somewhere here and then bring up the blacks a little bit i don't want this glow to be too heavy and i'm also bringing down the dehaze all right perfect that's it for the local adjustments again compared to before now we have a much better looking image the contrast is back and everything just looks much better next up let's do a little bit of color grading although they are won't be happening much. So in the color mixer, I want to start in the saturation tab, bring up the yellow saturation, the greens, and maybe even the blue ones. All right, then let's switch over to the luminance tab. Here I'm raising the yellow luminance, and I'm also raising the green luminance. You can see this will make this bright spot in the back especially a bit brighter so that's looking really really good if you want we can further bring down the blue luminance which will just make the sky darker and thus give us some more contrast i think this looks cool but of course that's just a personal taste thing then for the split toning let's start with the highlights and i'd like to only apply a very subtle amount of course with a warm color tone for the highlights somewhere in this range and then just bring the saturation up a notch. I don't want to go too crazy, so that's enough. I'm going to do the same for the midtones. Warm color tone, low saturation, perfect. For the shadows, I'm using a cold color tone, again with a low saturation. So we're just applying some minimal split toning in here. Finally, I'm heading down into the calibration tab and I'm bringing down the blue primary hue. And I'm also raising the saturation here. Perfect. Finally, let's head into the details tab and sharpen this image. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking for the important areas, and then increase the sharpening. Perfect. So at this point, we can switch over to Photoshop and give this image the final touch. Okay, first off, uh, there are a few sensor spots. So I'm using the spot healing brush just to clean up this image. All right, that looks good. Then I want to continue doing some dodging and burning. Therefore, as usual, I'm using the TK panel plugin. I do want to add some more contrast in this foreground area. First off, I want to darken a few spots. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. And since I want to darken the shadows, I'm going for a darks mask. That's a bit too much. That's again a bit too much. So let's go with dark three and apply it as a layer mask on our overlay layer. And I'm using a dark color, maybe even add a little bit of blue to it. And let's see, brush opacity is low enough. Now I'm just darkening a few parts in here. So I don't really care about underexposure in this area because I think this will make the image look a bit better. At the same time, I do want to dodge the foreground a bit. So again, new layer, overlay blending mode. But this time, of course, I want to make the highlights a bit brighter. So I guess I'm going with the lights one mask at first and apply it as a layer mask on the overlay layer. And since we want to dodge things, I'm going with white as the foreground color. Now I'm just starting to paint over the things I want to make brighter. And that's just this patch of plants and this rock in the center foreground. 
it's looking pretty good already. However, I do want to add one more layer of dodging to it. So again, new layer, overlay blending mode. And again, I'm using the lights one mask. And then just use the white brush again to introduce some more brightness in here. Perfect. At this point, let's work some more on the glow. For that reason, I am going to merge all those layers. So next up, I'm heading into the Nick Collection plugin. And you can already see I have selected the Glamour Glow effect with those settings. I've added a little bit of warmth to the glow. And I do want to restore the saturation with a rather low glow amount. So let's just apply these settings like they are. Okay, so this glow effect works really good on the bright spots in the back, but I don't want to have it on the foreground. There's an easy solution for that. Just hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask. Then with a white brush, I am going to paint back in the glow. So I just want to have it on the bright spots in the back right there, maybe even in the sky, just like that. And here we have the glow effect in the distance without changing the foreground. Perfect. So at this point, I do want to try something I'm usually not using and therefore I'm using the TK panel plugin again because the TK panel plugin comes with a different set of effects. And here you can see the autumn glow effect, which I want to give a try right now. You can set the radius of the glow yourself. I think that's maybe a bit low. Let's, let's give it a try like this. Of course, right now it's very heavy, so we just need to bring down the opacity of that folder. I guess it's looking pretty good. Again, I don't want to have it over the foreground, so I'm applying a layer mask. And I'm just erasing the parts which I don't want to have the autumn glow effect on. All right, and that's it. And that's it for editing this mountain landscape. I hope this was an interesting tutorial. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.